Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent and in today's video, we're gonna go into episode two of actually setting up our Google Cloud platform to host our very own free Minecraft server 24 seven. It'll be completely free to use for you and your friends and it'll have some pretty good specs to start off. So we're gonna go step by step, standing up for the Google Cloud platform, creating our project, uh, creating our virtual machine instance, logging into our virtual machine and configuring it in order to begin loading up our Minecraft server. This whole process takes less than 20 minutes and you get a completely free 24 seven Minecraft server where you can set it up for your friends uh, to begin playing on. So let's go ahead and get into the video. If you guys are brand new here to the channel, definitely go down below, hit the red button to subscribe, make it gray, hit the bell to be notified every time we release a brand new video, and of course, give this video a thumbs up, make it blue. Check out my other videos on my channel. If you have comments or suggestions for upcoming videos, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. Okay, now right off the bat, what you wanna do is head over to Google and type in Google Cloud or you know Google Cloud Platform, any of the sorts. Now the very first search here should be Google Cloud. It should be the Cloud Computing Services. You're gonna go ahead and select that. Once you've selected that, you're gonna go ahead and appear on this page where you can contact sales or go into the console. Now up at the top, what I wanna go ahead and quickly showcase is that brand new customers to this service get $300 in free credits to spend on the Google Cloud. So you get $300 to spend as ever you want over the next time frame, in order to set up your Minecraft server, pretty beefy right off the bat. So they also do have some free tier as well. So we'll quickly go over the Google Cloud free program. So right off the bat, you get 90 days to spend $300 on their Google Cloud service. That means you could create a Minecraft server that has four cores and 16 gigs, and it'll be completely free for the first 90 days, chewing away at that $300 of free credit. But they have a free tier here. So they have a free tier here of different products. So after 90 days has expired, you can lower your instance down into the free tier and begin continuing to use the Google Cloud platform completely for free. So here you're able to have one virtual machine instance on the West Coast in Oregon and Central in Iowa and the East Coast in South Carolina. You get 30 gigs of standard disk, so that's plenty of space for you and a few friends to begin playing Minecraft and have just a nice, easygoing Minecraft server. You get five gigs of snapshots, so every weekend you can do a quick snapshot of your system, and then if you have any issues, you can always revert it back to that previous snapshot, and then that's just your free tier. You get that indefinitely. Uh, there's instance, is not by time so your fear your free tier 2 e2 micro instance limit is by time not by instance so each month you are eligible to use all of your e2 micro instances for free until you have used the number of hours equal to the total number of hours in the current month so every month you get that free instance completely for free and definitely so long as you're staying within these boundaries so right off the bat we're going to go ahead and create our system based off the Minecraft requirements. And we're gonna have a really nice beefy machine. So Minecraft's recommended requirements are one CPU and four gigs of RAM. So our machine, we're gonna go ahead and have a nice beefy machine uh, running at least at a minimum four gigs of RAM, but we'll probably have ours running just a little bit more because we have so many credits to use to get our system going. And we wanna have a nice beefy system getting it going. So jumping back over here, so we can actually click on here to get started completely for free. And that's gonna get us logged into the Google Cloud platform. So it kind of gives us our account information. So you're just gonna go ahead and describe your organization. I'm just, it's a personal project, disagree. Uh, you know, agree for the platform and hit continue. You can see on the side here that you get $300 of credits for free that you can use for your work over the next 90 days. So over the next 90 days, you and your friends can actually set up a pretty beefy system for you guys to use over the next 90 days. And then after the 90 days has expired, you guys can kind of beef it down to a smaller one gig system. But we're gonna go ahead and set up our system. So here, identify verification and contact information. So I'm gonna go ahead and just punch in my number here. 
and blur it out for you guys. So this is just the same process that you would go through while setting up your own account. So I'm not gonna be skipping around anywhere. Uh, the same process that we're gonna be going through in the video is the exact same process that you would be going through. Our account type, just change that to individual. And instead of putting in a credit card or debit card here, I just go down below and there should be an option to select the arrow and then select PayPal. And then that's all you really need to do. Uh, just fill in your information there for PayPal and start your free trial. So if you have a PayPal account, you guys can sign up for the PayPal account. I'm just gonna go ahead and punch in some random digits here and start my free trial. Because this is a, the first time that you've kind of entered in here, you're not gonna have any projects. And the next thing that we wanna do is create a project. So here we go into our projects. I'm gonna go ahead and create a Minecraft server and create this project. Okay, so now we're inside of our Minecraft server project that we just created. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the hamburger here, go down to Compute Engine, head up to Virtual Machine Instance because we wanna create a virtual machine instance inside of the, the uh, Compute Engine. That's that area here that we wanna set up our server. Okay, here we have the ability to enable the Compute Engine API. So this process here takes another, another minute or so. So while this is um, getting enabled, we wanna go ahead and just make sure that we have the minimum here. So we want four gigs of disk space. So again, the free tier here allows you to have 30 gigs completely for free. So that, that aspect is met. Dedicated video RAM, you know, the system is gonna have 256 megabytes. That's completely fine. The RAM, we, we're gonna go ahead and set up our server with a minimum of four gigs, but uh, using the free credits that we receive over the next 90 days, we'll probably set up for the RAM to have 16 gigs where we can go ahead and, and run our Minecraft server using the minimum of four gigs and the maximum of eight gigs. So let's go ahead and check back on this API and it should be finishing up here shortly. So I'm not going to be forwarding through anything that way. You guys can kind of see just how long this process takes. If you guys were following along as well, this is pretty much how much time you would spend kind of getting this going. And, you know, unlike other free Minecraft server hosts where you're going to be hit with ads or not really be in control of your server or have to pay to get a server and test it out, uh, you don't have to do anything here. There's no absolutely no payments here. You can just set it up and test and it's completely all yours. So here, we're now inside of our virtual machine instance. Down on the bottom here, we have a blue button. We wanna go ahead and create the instance. So now we are going to go into creating the actual virtual machine now. So we've, we're have we going into kind of step two. We're creating our virtual machine instance. So the name here, I'm going to go ahead and name this Minecraft server, same as my project. Now here in the region, the region is permanent. So if you want to stay within this free tier, you should select either US West one, US Central one, or US East one. That way in the future, uh, when you go to lower your, uh, the, uh, the specs, the machine configuration into the free tier, at least your region will be within a region that you can keep long-term. So I'm located over on the West Coast, so I'm going to go ahead and locate and select US West 1, and your zone doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and just select Alpha for A there, and then that's going to be my region. So later on, after the 90 days, when my $300 of credits has expired, I can easily stop my virtual machine, edit the machine configuration, and lower the machine type down to the, the free scope. Now, here is where we kind of select our engine, our, our machine configuration. So we can select it right here, and we can see that the medium build here comes with two virtual machines and four gigabytes. The E2 Micro, which is the free virtual machine, uh, is two CPUs and one gig of memory. Uh, I have loaded up in the very first video here, back here, this instance where I was kind of showcasing what the Google Cloud can do. I was running a 1.17.1 server. It was a bit laggy at the start, 
but it did work where I was kind of running around. I had no issues. I was kind of choppy at times, but once my area, the, the area that I was in and being active in, once that got built out on the server, it was no longer an issue. I was able to kind of move around, build my little base right there and had no issues. And then here I asked the question, if anybody knew of a Minecraft server that I could actually run on 512 megabytes, you know, anywhere from 256 to 512. I did have um, Octane here, another YouTuber, Octane. He also suggested running 1.12 or 1.8. So I did try 1.8.9 and that one ran completely smooth. That server, I, I had no issues, no hiccups. I was running around exploring the area. I found out that in 1.8.9, they don't have shields. So <laughs> that was a interesting thing. So here, uh, going back to our system here, I'm gonna go ahead and select the E2 standard four. And what this is going to allow me to do is have four CPUs and 16 gigs of memory. We can see that the monthly estimate here is $98.84, but we have nearly $300 in credits available. Uh, I've set up a virtual machine in the past in that last video. So this is just using a little bit of that TR credits um, that of that $300 and our systems are gonna be running really nicely 24 seven here. Okay, so all we've done here is E2 standard. Uh, the next option here that we wanna check is go into the boot disk hit change, select the operating system, go down to Ubuntu, select that. This one's very low as far as storage. So it takes up very minimal. It's really quick and easy and lightweight. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and select Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. And then here, we wanna go ahead and select the standard persistent disk and set the disk there to 30 gigs. Uh, because again, going back and looking at the free, 30 gigs is completely free. They're not gonna charge us here. So the only thing that we're really getting charged here for is the machine type. We just have a really nice beefy machine, uh, but the boot, but the uh, boot disc, that's going to be in the free tier and the region's going to be in the free tier. We're not gonna be charged at all for that area. Uh, so the only other area here that we're gonna go ahead and enable is the firewall. We're wanting to allow HTTP traffic and HTTPS. So we're just allowing traffic in and out from our virtual machine. And then here inside of the uh, networking area, select networking and networking tags. We're gonna go ahead and add Minecraft tag in here, hit enter, slide on down to create and select it. So now we've created our Minecraft server. Uh, we set up our Minecraft server with four CPUs, we've, um, so four CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM, 30 gigs of storage in a Linux operating system. So now our virtual machine is getting started here. You can kind of see that it's cycling here in just a few minutes. Uh, this will go green, the status will be up, and on the right hand side, we'll be given an external IP and the ability to SSH. So here we go. We can see that the instance is running. We're less than 15 minutes into the video, um, about 10 minutes of setting this up. And now we can go ahead and click on SSH here to begin logging into our Minecraft server. So while this is going uh, over here on the page, before we get any further, uh, click down here on setup firewall rules. We want to go ahead and set up our firewall rules for Minecraft. So up at the top, click on create firewall rule. Here, we're going to go ahead and name this Minecraft rule and slide on down to your tags. So target tags. Remember that we set up our virtual machine with the target tag, the network tag Minecraft. So we're going to go ahead and also create the Minecraft tag in here. That way, uh, this rule applies to that uh, virtual machine instance and then here as the source IP range now uh, this is basically asking what networks are able to be allowed to connect to this server through what IP and what ports uh, so in this case we want to set this to 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 so all IPs with a CIDR of 0 and that allows all IP ranges to connect to our Minecraft server down here, we wanna go ahead and select TCP. 
and this should already have my um, connection there. The default Minecraft Java connection port is 25565. And then in the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to uh, S FTP, secure FTP to your Minecraft server and load plugins into your Minecraft world and set up Geyser. So we're gonna go ahead and select UDP and UDP's default port here is 19132. So for Java, we have 25565 and for Bedrock, we have 19132. So in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and SFTP to our Minecraft server, uh, install the Geyser plugin and set up our Minecraft server to allow Java and Bedrock. So that's what we're gonna be doing on our next video once we have this going. And then here, we're just gonna go ahead and click create. So now we've created the rule. It's creating the rule down there. We can go ahead and click on the hamburger menu, head down to compute engine and back up to our virtual machine instances. And here we are on this page. Now we already selected the SSH tab. So you can go ahead and bring that up. That tab should be available. And here we are, we're logged into the system. We're using about 5% of our 30 gigs of space. Our memory usage is very low at 1% for this system. And all we need to do here, before we do anything, we wanna update and upgrade our system. So that's always the thing you should do with any operating system. As soon as you get onto the operating system, update it uh, and upgrade it to the latest security versions and settings and the, uh, the system itself, the operating system itself. So command number one that we're gonna be running will be down in the description below. All of these commands will be down in the description below. The first command is just to update our operating system to the latest and greatest operating system settings and security settings. So there's just a combination of two commands in one. So we'll have a little, um, you know, a lot of the times, a lot of individuals don't know what commands are running on their virtual machine. So I'm trying to explain it in a way that if you are watching this and you're wondering what are the commands that we're running, what do they do? I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about, about each command that we're running here in order to kind of understand what we're doing here. So the very first command, we just did sudo, uh, sodo, which is mean um, you're running as the super user. SU means super user. And then we're just running it as a super user update and super user upgrade. Okay, so this is done. So we've updated our systems to the latest and greatest. Now, depending on the version of Minecraft that you want to run, this is where you need to install the specific version of Java for your Minecraft server. Now, these systems can load a number of, of Javas. So we can type in Java version, and we can see here that Java is not currently found on the system, but it can be installed with one of these commands. So if you're wanting to start a Minecraft 1.17 uh, yeah, or higher, you would use Java 16. If you want to run a Java 1.16.5 to I believe the 1.13 series, you would want Java 11. And if you use something older like 1.13, 1.12 and prior, you may wanna use the Java 8. So in this case, we are using, uh, we're gonna be installing Minecraft 1.17.1. So here I'm gonna go ahead and do sudo, which is just the super user and then paste the open JDK command right there. And this is basically just asking us uh, that this is gonna be loading and using 214 megabytes. Do we wanna to agree to that? We're gonna go ahead and hit yes to agree. And it's going to install Java on our machine. So I set up a previous server on 1.8.9 and I had ran the command to install Java 8. So now if we hit Java-version, we can see what version of Java we are currently using. We can see right here, we're using Java 16.0.1. Okay, now we have our system up to date. We have it upgraded to the latest and greatest and we have Java installed. The next thing we want to do is begin to create our directory for our Minecraft information. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and type make mk directory space and I'm gonna go ahead and type in Minecraft dash 1.17.1. All we're doing here is running the command to make 
a directory, which is a folder. That folder name will be Minecraft-1.17.1. And now I created it. I can type ls, which is just list. And I will see that that folder is listed there as Minecraft and the name. So now I can type in cd to change directory, hit M and tab, and it'll fill out that folder that I created. If you created a different folder name, just hit the first letter of the folder and hit tab and it'll finish out for you and hit enter. So now we are inside of that folder name. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can blow up the text any larger. No, I can't. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this on the mobile. I know sometimes it can be difficult to see on the mobile, um, mobile devices, but all these commands will be down in the description below. Okay. Now we are inside of the Minecraft folder. At this point, we want to decide what version or what type of Minecraft we want to load. Uh, so we have some options out there. We can go to mcversion.net and we can install the vanilla versions of Minecraft. So here we have all the options of the stable versions of Minecraft going from 1.17.1 all the way back to 1.0. So we're actually able to install the vanilla versions using this website. I will have this link down in the description below as well. But in my case, I want to, in my next video, go over installing the geyser plugin. So instead I want to load paper Minecraft. So I went over to the papermc.io website, clicked up at the downloads. Then here I can download paper 1.17.1. Now you can download previous versions of Minecraft by clicking on legacy. Here you can see that you can download 1.15.2 all the way down to 1.8.8 of paper. So these are all the paper versions. So depending on again, what version you want to load, just know that it's available there. Uh, we're going to install the latest and greatest, which is the update 277. So in this case, if I were to click this, it would be a direct download where I could download uh, the the file the jar file right there uh, so knowing that you want to right click and copy the link address once you've copied the link address head over back to your ssh console type uh, w get so we're basically doing a a world wide web get space and then go ahead and paste that url and now we have downloaded the paper file we can type in ls to list our files once again, and we can now see that this document, this um, this jar file, is now located in this folder. So now we're, we're, we're to the step right now where we want to actually start up our server and go through the EULA. So I'm going to go ahead and type screen, which is going to allow me to go to a separate screen from my server. And the reason I do this is that way I can toggle between my server page and my my instance, my my server, my Minecraft server instance. So I can kind of toggle between them um, and kind of leave it up 24 seven without closing out of the session and crashing out my server. So all I did was screen, hit enter, and I'm in a separate screen than my, my server itself. We can actually see the screen that we're currently in by typing screen dash ls to list our current screen. So this is the separate screen that we're attached to right now. We can go ahead and type in our list to list that file that we downloaded, the paper-1.17.1-277.jar dash dash file. So now we're gonna go ahead and kick our server up uh, using the Java command. So we're gonna go ahead and type in Java space uh, big X MS four gigs for using minimum of four gigs and then our maximum that we're going to be using is eight gigs and we're going to be running the jar and then we have this new version here and then at the very end type in no gui and there we go so what we're doing is we're running our server starting up using four gigs but we have the maximum that it can use of as eight gigs and as this is going, it should cancel out here in just a few seconds because we need to accept the EULA. Okay, right there, it failed to load because we need to accept the EULA. Next, we're gonna go ahead and type in nano and then type in the EULA.txt, which is the file that we wanna edit and go into the file, head to the very end where we need to set this to true. 
Now hold control, hit X, hit Y to, uh, yes, you wanna save your modified issue and then hit enter to complete it. And now we're back out, you can see here, we're down there at the bottom, uh, ready to once again hit up two times to go back to that previous command that we ran. And actually, really quickly, I can go ahead and type in ls. We can see here that we have a few other files within that folder because we started off our folder, our, our server initially. Uh, so what I wanna do here prior to starting up our server once again is go ahead and type in nano server.properties. And here, before I start up my server once again, I'm gonna go ahead and um, give, give this a message of the day equals hello youtubers <laughs> free google 1.17.1 server so we're just going to say hello youtubers and then that'll be our message of the day pvp is true we can set difficulty to hard uh, we can set our players to say 15 we can set our view distance to four we can set our there's one other thing here I want to set, which is the spawn protection to zero. And that is it. So now I can hit again, control and X together, hit Y to accept, hit enter. And we're back at our, our command prompt where I can hit up, up, up just a few times up until I get that, that Java command again, hit enter. And now we are starting up our Minecraft server officially. So we should see all the files begin to populate. Now here, while this is going, I'll actually show you guys here in just a minute. Uh, so while this is kind of going, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the left-hand side and I have my Minecraft instance up on the right-hand side. So really quickly before I log in, it's gonna display my public IP, but I'm going through a VPN. So all the comments saying that I'm showing my public IP, just really quickly, I'm using a, <laughs> A, uh, VPN so it doesn't actually show my actual VPN uh, my, my public IP but thank you guys for commenting in the past that's you know always appreciated uh, so really quickly let's go back here to our virtual machine which is here we want to go ahead and copy the external IP to our clipboard and bring Minecraft up bring our session up and go ahead and click on add server server IP address, and I'm gonna go ahead and give this Google Cloud Server, hit done. And right here, if I spell that correctly, it doesn't matter on the spelling of the server, it should now say, hello YouTubers, this is a free Google 1.17.1 server. And I can hit enjoy in the server, and boom, we are now inside of our Minecraft server. Just like that, easy peasy. And I can run over here and begin doing a few, you know, the basic stuff, hitting wood. Chop down a tree. Look at this. I completed my very first uh, quest up there, my achievement. I've gathered some wood. And now if you are your own, um, you know, you're basically the operator of your Minecraft server and you want to opt yourself, you can go ahead and opt yourself. You can see that the, the wood, um, the tree there at the bottom turned brown because it lost the attachment to the root of the tree. So as I break this one, let's go ahead and break this remaining one up here. We'll see if the leaves turn brown. Oh yeah, you see that the leaves, they turn brown indicating that the roots of the tree have been chopped down. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this bigger uh, really quickly, just kind of playing around here in the, in the uh, server for a bit. And I just showcase and we'll, we'll run around here just a second. Uh, what we can see here, our time in the video, we're at 33 minutes. Five minutes of that was basically the intro and in getting our server or getting signed up for Google. So this whole server process, you were with me step by step, no gaps. We set this up in 25 minutes or less. Uh, you know, if you guys weren't talking such as I was, then uh, it can completely be done. Super easy peasy. Uh, no issues. I'm going to go ahead and just grab a couple of those, throw down our crafting table, craft up a pickaxe, uh, go ahead and grab some stone here. And yeah, we could have, we can, we can give our friends the external IP right now. 
and all of our friends would be able to connect onto our Minecraft server and begin playing in the survival world. It's set up on hard. If you guys are interested, I'll, I'll leave this instance running. So when you guys are watching this tomorrow and you guys are looking at it, um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just save it. I know, I'll leave it. I'll leave it running and I will be ending, I will eventually be shutting it down to uh, load plugins during the next video process, but um, it'll be active up until then. So it'll just be a public server. If you guys watching this video are looking to join a public server, this one will be active. I have my own public free Minecraft server uh, located here. Let me go ahead and disconnect over here. So this is Go Dungeon SMP. It's a dungeon server. It is just play.godungeonsmp.ga. Completely free to play on there. It's PVE survival. Where they have claims, world dungeons scattered throughout the world. Uh, where you can just run in and do like a rogue style dungeon or a uh, roguelike or doom. There's a ton of different dungeons scattered throughout the world with caves and cliffs, dungeon biomes, all sorts of different new biomes. So definitely check out that server if you guys haven't checked it out. Uh, but let's see here. There we go. And then if you guys want to op yourself in here, all you need to do here is type in op and type in your username and you have operated yourself. Okay, now, if you wanna leave your server running as it is right now, uh, but you wanna work on your server itself, hold Control and hit A and hit D. So Control A and Control D, and this will actually take you back to the prior screen right here. And here we can see, uh, I can type in here screen dash ls to list off my screens so here this screen right here is running the server it's currently detached uh, but our server is up and running and if i want to remote onto that screen i could type in screen dash r to remote and then type in the integer here which is 16482 and then i would remote onto that integer that instance of the server uh, so I could do slash help right here and get a list of all the uh, the commands for our Minecraft server. Uh, so I could locate the, let's go ahead and locate the stronghold. Let's go ahead and set myself game mode creative, TP to negative 248. I will go 100 negative two, one, three, six. And now we're teleporting ourselves to the stronghold right here, where if I were to just dig straight down, I would uh, eventually go into the stronghold. But the easiest way here is to go game mode, spectator. And there we are, we're inside of the stronghold right here. And see if we can find, oh, there it is right there. Uh, game mode, creative. Oops, not that. I want eyes. We're just kind of checking out the um, the server itself. Like, there's no issues. You can see how fast it's running. I haven't had any sort of issues over here on the left hand side. Everything is running nice and smooth. Uh, we've reached the end right here. And we're kind of just zooming and the ender dragon. Let's see if we can see him here. Go ahead and make this screen big. Boy, that is a um, very dark and gloomy. Yeah. But the ender dragon. Sh oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He should be up there somewhere. He's just not very visible. Okay. Uh, but that is basically it. I'm going to go ahead and. Stop our server. Actually, I'll leave it running, but uh, we're gonna go ahead, hit Control A, Control D to go to the previous window. And then here I can go ahead and hit LS. And if you wanna edit any of your your files within here, so if you wanna go and optimize your, your paper server, um, we do need to stop our server first. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Stop. Our server closed. 
And now I can hit Alt A, Alt T to go back over here. And I can go nano and go into each um, file that I want to adjust, such as the paper.yml. And I can go through here and make my adjustments to optimize my Minecraft server. Hit Control X and exit out of there. And Y if you made any changes. Uh, but that is basically it. Our server is completely up. It's active. It's 24 seven. So long as we don't stop it. And that is basically it. Let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of this quick video. Uh, we had essentially a free 24 seven Minecraft server set up on 1.17.1, uh, set up all within 25 minutes. You know, it would actually take you longer to go through the process of buying a Minecraft server on, an, on a host and get it all configured. It would take almost the same time or a little bit longer to go through the whole process. And here we got it all done for free and we're able to log in, play on our Minecraft server, begin giving out our IP to our friends where they can connect on to our Minecraft server as well. Uh, so that is it for this video. Um, yeah, that's it. So thank you all for tuning in. If you guys have any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section below. All the commands will be down in the description below as well as timestamps. And in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and cover how to secure FTP to your Minecraft server here. To begin loading plugins, we're gonna be setting up Geyser in the next plugin, which will allow you to have both Java and Bedrock players join your Google Cloud platform. So that is it. Thank you all for tuning in. If you guys haven't yet subscribed, go down below, hit the red button to subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when we release that brand new video. And of course, give this video a thumbs up, make it blue. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.